I can see, we need to do this in real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This could yeah, be yeah, fun. Yeah, this works. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to the Düsseldorf International Boat Show. Together with me today is Ben Knowles. You know him from the walkthrough video we did in Fort Lauderdale. And I thought, what a good idea would be to continue on that walkthrough. We had a great fun in Fort Lauderdale. Now we have a different setup of products and boats available here. So I thought, why not? So welcome to Europe and Düsseldorf. It's a lot colder here, I've got to say, uh, <laughs> but it's definitely, there's a lot of energy in this room and in this hall, particularly you know, at this elevated level, this is really quite amazing. Here you are at 10 year anniversary with Axopar. I am sure that this hall looked very different even five years, years ago. even five years ago, let alone 10 years yeah, ago. That's true. By some of your neighbors that yeah, are around here. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so if you're referring to that, Düsseldorf Boat Show is one of the boat shows that actually draws the top players of boating uh, manufacturers. And in here, I would say, if you want to go and see what's available in Europe for you to go boating in, Düsseldorf Boat Show is the place in spring to be experiencing that. And in that sense, very interestingly, Oxopar said the adventure genre with the Oxopar 28 and the 37 at time. Right. And as co the company has now grown over the 10 years very, very rapidly. Oof, and yeah. we've already now in the 10 years, we've been able to produce over 6,000 boats, mainly of these 37s and 28s. And in, in also we, we reached actually one really surprising milestone that I hadn't actually calculated in my head, which is the milestone of retail sales to our dealerships of Axopar boats. Mm. And we actually hit the critical limit of 1 billion euro uh, one week ago, which Unbelievable. is, in, I think it's equivalent of the 1.1 billion US dollars. Un that's absolutely unbelievable. But that is so much of gratitude to our customers that they found the product, they found the brand, and they found the adventurous spirit of Axopar. Secondly, also for the great support of our dealership network on a global scale. The United States market is one of the most important markets we have to have professional dealers that support the brand, live the brand together with their customers is something that is actually irreplaceable. And that is one of the key things. So as a dealer, I also congratulate and thank you at the same time for being a part of the success. Well, it takes a village to get the, to a 1 billion mark. So uh, that so is true. It's, it's, it's a collective effort by, by everyone's, uh, everyone's part. That so. is true. But now then following, and very interestingly seeing that you're getting a lot of brands and really like iconic world leading, the biggest boat brands in the world are now also looking into this genre of adventure boatings. And actually we really love that competition mm. because that competition is actually something that drives us yeah. to create and make better boats on a daily basis for our customers to enjoy. The big titans of the industry, for example, Brunswick, is a company that makes great products. And now with their introduction into the adventure world, in that sense, they are also creating a lot of noise in their own clientele. And that clientele is now then, of course, going to have a look at the original that started it all, which sure. is the Oxopar. Of and that course. brings us a myriad of opportunities to meet new customers unfamiliar with the Oxopar brand to your dealerships or to us as a brand. Well, and you know, I think just your position in this hall here, this, you are in the center of this hall and all around you, us are, are your friends that have come up with their own version of the adventure boat. So. Yes, and, 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 and of course, when we talk about boats out there, there is no way we can accommodate one boat that will fit every boater in the world. Sure. So yeah. a boat is always about a compromise for a certain functionality you want to have on board. The Oxopars right. are focused on being so multifunctional as we humanly possibly can make them. But there will still be some things that we need to give when some, uh, some customers are searching for certain things. So for right. example, the one thing that Oxopar never compromises is the drivability right. and the design of the hull. 
And for our part, that means that we're always going to be focusing on creating one of the best handling and most fun, drivable, safe and comfortable boats out on the market. After that, we start fiddling around with what sort of space can we fit inside of a hull right. that is capable of doing exactly like this. And I would say the myriad of the other brands that are out here, they are focusing more on social spaces, interior volumes, trying to fit as much possible knickknacks into their boats, but at the same time also then compromising the number one thing we believe is important, which is the drivability and comfort while you are out on sea. You know, simplicity within a boat is a very special thing, particularly when it's highly functional. Yes. Those two words are almost, op, you know, can be, are polarizing in some, in some respects. And you have kept the drivability, the functionality, and beautiful simplicity within the boats as well to make them function and reliable throughout the years. Thank you. So that's one really key thing. So doing a simple solution for us takes five to ten more times in hours or effort or money even right. than making a solution that is not really that functional, that is a bit over-engineered or that is a bit too complex to understand. Sure. So finding the simplicity uh, is actually the key of Oxopar but it takes you five times the effort to come to that point. Sure. When it's done, it's as obvious as, for example, an iPhone, when that phone came out on the market, when people held it in their hands for the very first time, then people get it. Right. But before that, there are so many steps you need to be able to take to even create a product like that. And I think the 29 is a perfect example of us having 10 years of development, 10 years of time, to get the customer feedback, get the dealer feedback, get an understanding of what people want in the ten, next 10 years to come from Oxopar. And we've been able to listen and accommodate their wishes to the maximum of capabilities by still staying true to the concept of the Oxopar 28 and not creating a 31, 32, 33 foot boat, but actually staying true to the concept of the 28 that actually made the company success in the beginning. Well, you know, I think there's a lot of similarities between the success in, in simplicity and design from Apple. I didn't realize I needed an iPad in my in my life until I got one. Yep. I didn't realize I needed a 29 Axopar <laughs> in my life until I saw one just a few days ago. So well, it's a pretty amazing. The complexity that goes into the simplicity of a user experience. Yeah. And that is exactly the same values we wanna we wanna move forward with Axopar. Well, but hey, let's let's have a look at the boats here. Sure. Uh, yeah. We had a different setup of boats in, in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. So let's have a look at some difference. Of course, now in this booth, uh, if the cameraman gets a good clear shot of the booth, we're actually being able now to give our customers a full walk to a full Oxopar experience, starting from the Oxopar 22 with the Mediterranean cushion setting with the multifunction storage all the way to the 25, following the 29s, both versions, following to the 37, sun top and cross cabin, going over to the 45 cross cabin and 45 cross top. So this is a very nice setting where you're being able to have a complete overview of what Oxopar has to offer in one hall, in one setting, and, and be able to just you know walk through the different boats and actually see all the different solutions that we've done on all the respective models. Yeah, I mean, you really can carry through a variety of different levels of adventure just by looking at what you have here. And starting with the 22, which is offers so much seating for a 22-foot boat. Yeah. So exciting to drive. Hey, let's this. actually go and have a look at it. So yeah, let's walk absolutely. down from here. Like fun. And uh, because one thing is seeing it on the picture. Of course. One thing <laughs> is actually to seeing it getting um, it on getting there. Getting on it. Because this is also some things that actually blows my mind on, on things as well. So let's move over and have a look. It's a 22-foot boat. It's one of the best handling 22-footers out there on the market. But if there's something that is really special is the social spaces on board and the variety of different spaces that you have throughout the entire boat. So 
we're able to sit in the four front. So we will be sitting one, two, three, uh, four persons in the front if we want to. We have these very nice side bolsters. So to me, this is one of my favorite places just to be lounging like this sure, yeah. and sitting around. And this is for a 22 footer, just this space alone is already very accommodating. It's accommodating and you're able to, of course, fit a head on this 22 foot boat, yes. which that head enables you not only to you to just go day boating, but be comfortable and not schedule your day around going yeah, to the yeah, head. No. So, so that is so, so that impressive. Is something, uh, that is something that I love of the 22, that we were able to fit in that space. Yeah. And it's actually functional, very spacious. People don't really believe it when, when they see the console <laughs> and they, it's always like a positive surprise when they <laughs> open it up and they see. And of course, if you don't need it as a head, it's a super great space to store all your gear in right but yeah. talking about storing gear and and also is of course now the center multi-storage that we developed for the 22 and 25 now extended with the mediterranean package which actually creates like a full sun lounge throughout the whole width of the boat so this is something I would say pretty unique in this size of and a concept absolutely. of boat absolutely and you know a lot of sort of center consoles are focused solely on fishing. Yep. This, of course, you can go fishing on this boat, but you can store water toys to go uh, tow your kids and have a yep. fun day. And just the variety of use cases that you can enjoy this boat on is fantastic. Yeah, for sure. And then this boat also actually now has the top loading fridge oh, sure. and a sink. So yep. in this case, this boat you will be able to take all your drinks and food yeah. with you, have a, have a fresh water sink system in here, and then, uh, you know, plenty of space for a cooler box, even if you want to bring it underneath here. But to me, this is just uh, the multifunctionality so that when you have these bolsters up, you're still able to sit very comfortably, one, two, three, four, five, six persons inside of the boat. And what you can actually then also do is just pull out the, the, the base, pull out the, the cushion and you will have a full width sun lounge. And then when you take up the center base, the real thing is that when you change direction of these two, you will be able to sit one, two, three, four persons facing forward in here and still yeah. have a sun lounge for uh, facing backwards. The so this is a very interesting layout. I, my, one of my personal favorites for the multifunctionality. It is, you can just see how many different environments that this would be a lot of fun in. So. Yeah, for sure. All right. And you have continue. a lot of cup holders around too. So oh that's... yeah, that is something that we learned from, from you guys. <laughs> so that's been one of the key things that please do cup holders wherever you can. So of course we have the Euro size and we have the US size as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. But again, uh, capable boat, up to 50 knots of top speed even yeah. with the biggest engines very capable 22 footer small center console boat and, and fuel it, efficient as well yes Incre incredibly fuel efficient yes that is absolutely true and of course that boat is also available with the cross top like we have here on the 25 right now the whole concept idea with the 22 and the 25 was that we wanted to create a boat with the same beam the same width of the boat but with the 25 create a completely different experience sure. in a way sure. because on the 22 uh, it's an open center console in a way but with the 25 not to only make it three foot longer open center console we actually wanted to fit inside sleeping arrangements and a toilet that easy makes this into a quick weekender and a multifunctional boat that taking you anywhere very capably uh whether you know uh, in any type of weather wind or or uh yeah any, and with, any, any, any sort of um, conditions. And with kids, whether it's grandkids or your kids, having a place to cra for them to crash yep. for a nap time or a large kid like myself to crash for a nap yep. time too is, is pretty sweet for this size boat as well. Yeah, and you also see that we have some pretty good head oh, yeah. height for oh, the yeah. T-top protection. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the center table, of course, is folding down, and then you can fill this in the same way as we have on the Mediterranean with the multi-storage. Right. You can still fill this in, and you can also have, with the U sofa, a full sun lounge even in this area. Crazy. And you have a lounger forward yes. as well. So. so those are those are the two key things that I love. 
Then also, if you actually adjust the windscreen, this is one sure. of my favorites, that we have the adjustable windscreen. So that when you want to be driving, the weather is nice, you want to have the wind in your hair, you lower down the plexi and you're getting the wind in your hair. But when it gets a bit chilly and you want some weather protection, you just simply lift up the windscreen, tighten it, and now you have a very good deflection of wind. So yeah. behind the helm, you're fully protected from the wind and the chill. Yeah, that's so cool. That's a brilliant. Did you come up with that? Yeah, that's a very, and, and <laughs> it, as I said, all the simple ideas are usually the ones that are the most complex to come up with. <laughs> sure. So a very simple idea, but still to make this, you know, functional, easy to understand, and for us easy to produce, that is where the time comes in. Right. But also now with the 25, this is actually a very good, if we get one of the camera guys on board, we can actually show you the space inside of the 25. Because the one true thing that really surprises many of the people is the sheer space inside of the 25. Sure. And it's still very capable. It still has the same DNA and the same hull as the 22 and the 28. So it's a very sharp bow, uh, bowed boat. So it has a sharp entry hull. Right. And that means that it, this boat keeps cutting the waves in the same way. But now we utilized every possible centimeter or millimeter inside to create a huge space to sleep. So to me, for the occasional overnighting on a 25-footer, I'm easily fitting two persons inside here. And of course, for the kids or going longer distances to have the head with you or to have the toilet with you and the sink inside here. To me, this is a perfect quick day boat or a, or a weekender to go out tripping. It's so nice to have the option to stay on the boat if you're having too much fun and don't want to go home. Yeah, so, yeah. so in, in my way, this is a very interesting layout and actually when we're going to be going probably next on the 29 yes one thing for the camera guy also to show that the the seating that we created in the front of the 29 actually comes from this seating on the 22 and the 25. okay interesting. so this sort of u sofa seating sitting around here and just enjoying a day out sure when we went to the drawing board on the 29, yep. we were just thinking that how can we create this sort of solution for the four deck of the 29 without creating, without making it a 32 footer, because this could be something that you could see on 32, 33 footers, but not right. on 28, 29 footers. So taking this concept idea and still also adding the complexity of, of adding a forward looking bench on the 29, which was so well perceived and loved on the 37. Right. How can we have both of these on the four deck of a 28 when you know that we had the L sofa and then the, just the, the toilet compartment uh, on the 28 in the past? And now being able to showcase how that came along after year, you know, one year of iteration and just thinking of the concept how we can do it. But I think it's easier that we show it on the boat. So sure. let's go over on the 29. In listening to you talk about the concept of doing that, knowing you know the 28, it, the tall order to have a seating arrangement as nice as this on the yep. 25 yep. to develop that onto the 29. Yeah, it's not really that easy of an order in that <laughs> yeah, sense. It's, and, and, and it's not only about the seating arrangement, it's also about the full functionality, onboard functionality of the 29. Sure. Um, in our launch videos and in our launch uh, press material, we're just saying simple words like more is more. Right. And with the 29, we were talking about this in Fort Lauderdale, that we're going to be launching the, the, the 29. We, we've, we're teasing a few pictures of it, sure. but we didn't actually show that much of the 29. But here you have it, now the world premiere on the sun top and on the cross cabin. And with this boat, one was that from US especially, we had a request to create a boat that has a bit wider and stronger bow flare. Okay. So that when you're pounding really heavy seas, offshore seas somewhere mm -hmm. in US, yep. that you want to have that bit more width in the bow. Mm -hmm. And that actually fit perfectly with the philosophy of how can we create this sort of use of what you just saw on the 25 right. to work on the 28, 29 foot concept at the time. So we actually did two great benefits from that. So we created way broader bow. Mm -hmm. Actually, if we want to do really tech talks, 
the bow area of the 29 is yep. now in the same proportion as the 25. So okay. before the 25 mm -hmm. and the 22 was the boat that had the biggest flare in That's proportion right. to its size. You're absolutely right. Yep. And we took those sizes, moved them over to 29, and then we started moving all over the components. And just after many rounds of iteration, we end up with this concept. Mm. So now for a fully enclosed cross cabin boat, you're having the most social area I have never seen on a boat size like this that can be closed and driven in seconds when the weather change. Yes, yeah. And again, to coming from uh, an L-shape configuration to a U-shape yep. configuration, it is just amazing how you were able to pull this off with this social arrangement like this. And with you and I sitting next to each other, this yeah, is there is space. Yeah, and I'm not. This is yeah, yeah, yeah so, this so, is great. So it's more or less like you can sit tightly three persons, right. but, but two persons, no problem facing forward. Yep. Um, now we are, of course we have the table, but the table is on a high low. Right. So now it's in the low position with the low legs, and now we then put the sun pad in in place. So for me, just to sun lounge even in this position. This is very comfortable sure. and, and this sort of relaxed sensation and many people actually appreciate looking forward while you're driving. Right. So yeah. this was one thing that we really wanted to create with the boat. But then if we really like have a look, if we move a bit of the components in here, let's see how, how we get this transformed in a quick way. Sure. So changing the table legs, going from the low ones to the high ones and how we're gonna be transforming this into a full sociable seating up to eight people. So now, one, two, three, four, five, six persons easily sitting around the U sofa with the nice bolsters around the, the guardrails. You still have the forward facing sofa in here. Such a great place to be in. It is, it is, and you know, it's, it has transformed this whole bow area of the boat and you can do it easily like yeah. what we just and, did. And talking about improvement, improving things. So when we're also talking about accessibility and, and changeability, now the hatches have quick yeah, hatches yeah. so that you don't need to fiddle around anymore sure. under the cushions to find it. Or if you have this as a sunbed, you easily open up any hatch yeah. anywhere uh, quickly. And also the one thing is that when you're driving in very bouncy seas, if you, for example, forget to lock one of the hatches, right. that's going to be bouncing with the waves sure. until you turn the power off and, right. and go close it. But right. this one, once it's closed, it's done. closed, it's yeah. done. So these sort of small cool things. Uh, of course, we could have shown you also the headrest. The headrest is actually just for the length of it. So just so that people understand the length of it. So this yeah. is a full length sunbed already with this uh, so cool. positioning. So that's one thing. And then we hid a lot of other cool stuff in here also. You see there's a third leg position in there. And what we actually wanted to do, because uh, you will be taking one of these legs, but we, we can do it for democracy, just put yep. it here now. Yep. And now you have the table extended into this area. Wow, that's so very cool. So I can easily now sit in the forward with my table and still have you know, the, the sociability. And now also easier walkability all around the boat. So entering and leaving the boat very with this position. Or also, we had it in the low platform position. Right. We can also lower this one and then we have like a sunbed extension from the bench. Fascinating. I didn't even small catch things. on that. No, small <laughs> things. But of course, the one thing, if you do so, then you cannot open up the multi-storage. Of course, but right. The, if there's something that is interesting and one thing that we did not want to change is the accessibility to the forward area. Sure. Because on the 28, we always go from the deck this is something that we did not want to change. We yeah. still want to be, stay true to the homage of the Oxopar 28. Yeah. But what we did here is something also a bit unheard of in this size range. When we're talking about this space on top of the deck, right. what we actually created are below. So lifting up, now you're not only greeted by a full size multi-storage that will take up tons of bags and luggage. And that's why we wanted it to have it accessible from here. Right. How do you access a boat from the side? What do you have with you? A ton of bags or anything. Right. So you just want to have one hatch, throw it inside, close the hatch and go. Right. That's the right Oxoparian way of, of getting out on the water. But so that's one thing. So it's mainly a storage. Secondly, you can have it as a head. And then thirdly, as a sleeping area. 
So now, underneath this bench, which is always standard, you can also have the optional uh, water, uh, fresh water uh, uh, flushed toilet. And what we also did is we actually made a hidden sink. I love that. So, that is um, so clever. So washing your hands, anything, or washing things very easily in this hidden sink. And then it doesn't actually stop here. So the staircase that you use to get in and out of the boat, you just simply fold down and you fold down this um, additional step. If I were to have shoes or anything, I can throw my, my, my clothing or gear or anything underneath here. And the only thing I need to do is flip this one out and I have a full size bed again for two persons for the occasional overnighting. And I did the measurements. The size of this berth is is equal in size as the 25 berth. Yes. And so it's a very doable sleeping space. Yes. And this actually comes from the the ideas that when we develop any, let's say, we, when we develop the 22 and we develop the 25, or we do the 45 actually. Yep. There are always things we learn. Sure. And the bed and the size of the bed from the 25 was so easy for us to implement into the 29 when we set up the concept of the bow and we made actually very heavy calculations on fuel on efficiency of the hull right that what sort of dimensions and where can we change these dimensions still to keep the fuel efficiency or actually improve the fuel efficiency Which of the 29 mind bending <laughs> but after that then we started again putting the the, the components in place never forgetting drivability number one, then after that, the sociability comes. But now with the 29, we actually made the hull in total 30% more efficient. This doesn't mean you cut it 30% fuel efficiency, right. but we were able to make a bigger boat uh, with a, uh, even on a higher load or higher weight than the predecessor. Yep. You can run the boat with less fuel at higher speeds with the same engine as you were driving the 28 in the past. That's just i still don't fully understand how that is possible and that 30 percent number is like a coefficient of friction yeah it's a coefficient of friction so okay. it's not transferable straight into fuel economy yep. cut 30 percent yeah but the one thing that actually tells people quite a lot is that when you take a 28 you you were doing 1.9 liters per nautical mile with it we're doing 1.8 1.7 yeah with the 29 mm. uh and we increased the top speed with the same horsepower by one knot approximately one and a half knots so if you're going with the dual 200 horsepower engines yeah. uh, you're easily having a 50 knot boat wow. with the with the 29 cross cabin wild and that for a 29 footer is very interesting but what also the efficiency actually tells you is that we don't have a peak curve where the boat is at its most efficient. Mm. We were actually able to build a curve where we make the most fuel efficient hull over a long spectrum of speed. Yeah. So anywhere from 22 knots to 32 knots, we're able to ride the boat with the same liters per nautical mile, gallons per mile right. numbering without having this change. So that's already one thing. So now you will be actually selecting the speed you want to drive the, the, according to the conditions you're in, right. not vice versa. Sure. Or then additionally, the 29 now also gets this sort of, I call it a comfort speed, mm -hmm. cruising speed. So yeah. the fast, comfortable cruising speed has actually been increased to up to 36, 37 knots on the boat hmm. without going excessively or going over two liters per nautical mile with some engines and options. Mm. So you can actually do, uh, we're setting a new cruising speed, uh, let's say not a limit, but a cruising speed standard of doing with a 28, 29 foot boat, uh, 30, 35, 36, 37 knots. And you can't fake those numbers. Those are very impressive numers for for the this consistency size, yes. and this size of boat. Yep. And it is so much more challenging to get the right numbers on a boat that's under 30 feet versus a 45 foot boat. Yes. It is, this is a huge and, accomplishment. And usually when you do a bigger boat, you always add with more fuel, more right. engine, more weight, more power, more cost. Right. And what we actually wanted to do is that we really wanted to reduce cost on the boat, mm -hmm. have minimum overlapping parts, mm -hmm. reduce waste. Mm -hmm. All of this adds into the cost so that we are still with the 29 offering one of the absolute most price uh, price worthy boats out on the market when you have a look at any other brand that are offering a boat in this size range.
something about the design. So form follows function. That's that's the key words you've been hearing uh, throughout great designers throughout the years. The, the 29 is no exception. And you see a lot of shapes inside of the boat that you have not seen on the on a let's say like a utilitarian work boat or sure. cabin boat in the yeah, past. Sure. So it's we wanted to create this sort of sense of speed into the boat itself. But it's not only design features for the visuality, mm -hmm. it's for the functionality. So mm -hmm. when you're moving on a boat, a boat is always rocking. It's never stable. So all these shapes that we've done is actually to create a comfortable area for you so that you don't have any, let's say, like sharp edges or anything that you that can be hurting in. That is fascinating. And it's actually steering you while you're walking inside of the boat. So more or less here again, steering that you inside of the boat. That is fascinating. Uh, I did not again, pick up on that. Moving, moving around and also the fender boxes, the flares, the arches, everything in here is just so that even I don't need to hold my hands while moving around the boat. I can <laughs> actually support myself just with my legs around. Of course, there's ample handrails and hand spaces sure. all around, but this is just an example of how design can work for you also when it comes to usability and comfort. And you, to create the volume that you have for, there is a slight uh, slight upward, you're walking yes. upward, but we, it's, you hardly notice it. No, we, we didn't want to make a step inside of the floor. Right, so we actually right. made uh, a small gradient. And this was first uh, tried with our virtual reality, just yep. in trying to get an understanding what will be the limit. Yep. Uh, I would say that's still not that well noticeable, but I would not want to increase that angle at all sure. any more than that. But we pulled it off and got just the enough clearance in the forward area for making a sleeping cabinet with this small alteration. It's amazing. Let's hey, uh, have a look inside. So if there's something that changed on the 29 in the cross cabin, when you move inside, firstly, what you feel and see is the sensation of space. We have a higher uh, area towards the roof. You have more space. Uh, we have a 400 liter fuel tank actually now. So this Which means is that amazing. The, at the same time, we needed to raise the floor to accommodate 100 liters more. Yeah. But at the same time, we were still able to raise the level of the roof and the angle of the roof in order to accommodate more space inside. So that's at least one thing that is the, the big change in here. Additionally, when the moment you walk inside, and if we take, for example, this sofa down, the one thing that number one you will see is the panoramic windscreen now also on the rear view. It's, so you pull this mullion forward here, yes. and this is unbelievable, this, this space here. Yeah, so when you're sitting here as a, as a passenger, for example, you will have a way more connection with nature and light, and you're getting, you know, you're getting the experience of being on a boat completely different than the 28. But also, if you're there, and I would be the driver, so for me to be driving and harbor maneuvering, yes. I have perfect visibility backwards. I have good visuals over my engine yep. and I have no mullions that will obstruct myself, my view. Right. Or if I'm going to be turning with the boat, I can also have a good overview and I don't have any other boats or over, overtaking boats behind me that I would have missed. So this is not only again a design feature, this is safety features, this is functionality and this is experience. And you know, I think Still, people look at the Axapar that have not been on an Axapar before, and they think that you're in a cabin. When yep. they think cabin, they think enclosed. Enclosed, damp, uh, you know, dark. Dark, and yes. that is the last thing that I feel like I'm in right now. I do not feel like I'm in a cabin. I feel like I could be, you know, if we were on the water right now, yep. I would feel very connected to that water yes. sitting in the sea. And also what we did is, of course, we widened the sliding door, so you have way okay. easier access in and out of the boat now. We took away the big threshold, so this is now on one level. The flow around. is notable. Yes. It's a beautiful flow from helm seat or companion seat back here, yep. and even down into the cabin. Into the cabin. That, this is an, a very clever mechanism that you've designed yep. in here. Instead of the cumbersome, uh, so this is if you want to have a good space, you yeah. can open this one up, yep. but for me, I'm a smaller guy so for me this is already good enough for me to access so i sure. don't even need to lift this one up yeah so it's for me just to slide into the off cabin like this this is perfect but if you're a bit bigger guy uh you know you open this one up and you clear up more entry and access into the off cabin 
We also need a few. I love yeah. this. This is amazing right in here. Yeah, uh, small. So we, we got a lot of uh, requests for added storage sure. and having hidden storages and having more places for, for uh, stuff to be uh, around. So the multi-storage in the forward, the aft cabin, all these small nooks and lockers. We also have additional lockers down here on the sides so on both sides. You can store things under the aft cabin uh, bench. There's a fair amount of space underneath yes, there. Yes, underneath yeah. there. And of course, with the infill cushion. Now, the big things that are actually changing in here is also the usability of the entire aft cabin. Mm. Uh, if I demonstrate it. Before, when you went into the aft cabin, this was more or less one of your preferred sleeping. So you were sleeping with your head towards the engine. Sure. Mm -hmm. But now with the new layout, we created more space upwards and more width. Actually, what I now find as a new layout and way more functional is to sleep this way because now I get added, added width with the infill on the side. This yeah. is very, very spacious. Mm. And this was also one of the reasons why we still want to keep this area as the main sleeping. So if sure. you have somebody that wants to be sleeping overnight, mm -hmm. consecutive nights, the aft cabin is for them. Yeah. And the occasional overnighting, uh, that is where you can go with the front cabin. And that's the differentiation what we did on purpose. Yeah. So this is the main, that's the secondary. Yeah, and I was thinking if I'm doing an adventure with my buddy, having him sleep forward and me sleep aft, how cool is that? The, the likelihood of you bringing more people on board your adventure with you overnight is, is much higher likely. Yeah. Or even with kids. What a yep. great place for, for the kids. To, I have two kids. I can see them sleeping up there. No problem yeah, yeah. at all. No, no, no. So you have your own secluded space here in the back. The kids are up there in the front. So they cool. are probably going to be loving it to be, exactly. <laughs> be, be alone from their parents for a exactly. while as well. For sure. Uh, of course, things we didn't change is we still have the sink in here. So yeah. we have the top, uh, top loading fridge. We have the sink in yeah. here. Um, so on that, nothing has really like been taken away. So when we really, we never want to change things that actually work, sure, yeah. but the things that we can improve, yeah. we really want to push that improvement immediately to make it available for our customers. And that's probably one of the reasons how Oxopar has been able to grow so fast in only 10 years. And actually how we've come up with the third generation of a 28 foot boat mm -hmm. in only 10 years. Right. If you actually remember the traditional boating industry, mm. when they made a new mold, boat, they usually kept that one model for 10 years. Right. So in that sense, we've done three models in 10 years, just because we want to push out innovation, new products for our customers to enjoy. And that's probably one of the reasons why we've been able to sell the 28 in the thousands. Yes. Yeah, the 28 has been a wonderful success for our area. And I see a lot of potential in this 29 as well. Yeah, I believe for your region, this is a perfect boat for the, even for the sunny, warm days going out. Let's have a still uh, look, let's look a bit more for, uh, back. So um, the aft cabin has always been a very popular one. And we, of course, we didn't want to change anything on the, on the 29 as well. So creating a very sociable seating on the aft deck now with some additional cup holders on sure. the side. Yep. We also extended the, the cushions onto the fender boxes. Yep. So now this actually also is a third very sociable area around on the boat to enjoy the sun. But also, if you remember the Mark 1s in 2014 and 15, we actually had a small hatch in here and we mm. had uh, some requests yes. that could we do a new solution for accessibility and hatch for the aft cabin. Well, we did not do the small thing we did past. <laughs> now we did it completely so that now you have full access into the aft cabin. So if you don't want to use this for overnighting, you have, again have a lot of gear, stuff with you, easy access, throw it in, close the lid, forget and go drive. So again, in this area, the functionality and the, re the reinventing uh, and following with things that we've done in the past if we find them good we actually just want to continue pushing them with the 29. This is one of the things I didn't realize that we needed with the, with the 29 and this is phenomenal. This yeah, is it's, very... it's, a, it's a very cool small addition to it and actually then uh, I need to show you we don't have it installed on the boats yet but I'm going to be picking up a very cool picture oh, I'm excited of, for this. of the wet bar so we actually did a new wet bar solution for uh, you've seen it on the 45 
But the real fun thing is now that we are able to offer this also in a bit of a different way. I know that the Australians love this solution. So if we get a closer call look in here, so the Fender wow. Box today will have as an additional option, a top loading fridge cool. and a sink on, on the port side. Yep. And for the barbecue solution, we're going to go that. with the Americans, Magna Grill, Stainless oh, yes, Steel. That's my jam take, right there. I love take, that. Take it on the beach. Take it yes. with you. Go everywhere. I believe this is the right way to, do, to go when we're talking about an Oxopar 29 yep. and the adventure spirit of, of going and, and cooking. That I think is... this is better than having a cooktop running on electric oh, or God. gas or anything. Without way a faster, doubt. way better food, flavorful, all of that. So I think and that's the way to go. you can take that home and clean it. Yeah, for sure. You can't that's do that when no, it's bolted onto the boat. True. So very cool. Hey, so let's still have a look at the sun top because of course uh, we have two boats here. So sure. the same idea, the same concept of the 29 cross cabin, but now with the sun top, actually for the very first time ever, we included a sliding sun top roof. And it's very large as well. And we took that from the 37 because it was so well preceded on the 37. So we removed the idea of the T-top that we had on the 28 and made it into a sun top. And this actually now, this seating is a new seating that we finalized last week. We wanted to show this for Dusseldorf Boat Show because we find this in a way very revolutionary when it comes to the seating arrangement of it and the functionality because now with the forward sleeping cabin, right. you can start playing around with having these sort of sun lounging areas on, a, on an open day boat uh, to still, you know, get the, you have still the sun lounging in the front, like we mm -hmm. showed you on the cross cabin. Mm -hmm. So you dare go out and enjoy the sun. But we also got the feedback from some customers that they still want to be out in the, and, and feel the sun, but they don't want to be in the sun. Sure. So having a roof that is enclosable and you can get here in the shade is much appreciated. And that's mm. why we created this sort of very comfortable use of a setting. And you can see so many people around this area this in social while you're underway, even as the helmsman, yep. you've got all your friends right next to you cranking along at 30 knots yeah it's and, so and, cool and what we actually did here is that all of these cushions are actually movable and replaceable in different locations underneath here we have a high low table right. a fixed high low table this actually comes the physical table comes from the 45 okay. uh, cross top that we have here behind us so right. it's the same table as we have on the 45 mm. now on the 29 but the really fun thing is, for example, the concept with this one. So if we lift this one from the, from the sockets, yep. we can actually turn it around into two at another direction. So now oh. if I give you this one. OK, I'm with you. Yep. So now we will be able to sit face backwards. So very interesting in a way of, uh, you know, you have a water sports, you are at anchor, you, you want to be driving, looking backwards. This is a very functional uh, solution. This is very a great easy. spotter spot for, you know, for someone to be watching while you're towing kids with yes, tubes for and sure. whatnot. So yes. yeah, so many cool uses. And you're this aft facing focus on the boat. When you're swinging around on a mooring, looking aft, you're looking at the beautiful scenery looking yes, here. Sure. So it's, it's very, very nice. And it actually does not even stop here. So if I'm now going forward and I'm actually going to remove these side bolsters, we can also create a lot of more sunshade. So I'm taking our customer's jacket and moving it around. So again, just to give you an idea of the sheer size, now you have a still a seating for three persons facing backwards. But for me to be able to, to lie here, have the roof closed and still being shelter, it's a huge area. And what we can do now, also one thing, let's say if we go into the real details, many boat manufacturers put these sort of use sofa configurations very close to the engine. Sure. Uh, because that's the area where they believe that people want to spend their time with. Well, if you're, um, if you're stationary, it probably works fine. Yep. If your boat is a slow moving boat, it's probably fine. Sure. But the one thing is that if you would be sitting here, you would have roaring engines next to your ear. Right. Not the only that, but in addition, 
you will have no wind protection whatsoever while you're driving. Right. And as oxo bars are driving 25, 30, 35 knots cruising speed, you will have a lot of wind in your hair in here. <laughs> sure. And it's not gonna be comfortable. So that's why we moved the whole social mm. seating under the Santo proof to have yeah. it away and have a full functional aft deck on the same time you're able to have this uh, comfort area. And now if we take the sockets, uh, so sockets out again, and we move it now this time forward, I can show you the other things that we can do. So we put it this way. So now I have a full sun lounge facing backwards. So uh, just to show you the idea, wow. this, is, this is one of my favorite ideas. I like this. So, Very uh, cool. You know, Staying at a bay, <laughs> just you know, having the overview. We were just talking about that you can sit in the air, but this is the the multifunctionality that comes from the new sofa layout that we've done. And I'm not seeing any boat with this layout in the industry in this size range ever. I'm starting to lose count of how many different configurations you can put this into. Yeah, it's, it's going to be minimum five different configurations. Wow, yes. So let's still show you the one more, one of my favorites for the bad weather driving or when the when the weather gets really windy. Let's turn this around one more time. So we were talking about having the wind in your hair or having the engine roaring in your ears. Wow. Now, with this seating this way, I'm very close to the protective windshield. Oh, yeah, and the absolutely. wind chill for coming from the wind is minimum in here. So now wow. I'm sitting very close to the driver and I'm able to communicate with the driver and participate with anyone in the, in the helm, helm position and still being very safe in here. And still at the same time, if somebody wants, you're sitting there, I can still be lounging in here as well. Oh so, my gosh. So this is the, like the fourth direction you can take this bo side bolster, but still let's take this up for a dining table. Then that's not gonna be the last position. And I love the you. curvature they have here. It's so comfortable yeah. sitting in there. So let's put this one back into standard position. Yep. Facing forward. There we go. Then we can actually, yeah, if you remove that one, I'm gonna be putting up the, the cushions in here. So we have the side backrests also in here. And now as you see, this is the table from the 45. So the thing that we do now, give me a second. I'm gonna be opening up. Additionally, what I didn't mention is of course, all the storage that you're oh, getting yeah, underneath that. here as well. So now, wow. only thing we need to do here is unlock the table and have the table raise up. And now we have a comfortable seating for, uh, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people inside of here. Take the table out. Look at this. Very cool. Yeah, and quick. And easy. quick and easy. Of course, <laughs> these, these seats turn the same, so now oh, you can be course. sitting seating I'd, everyone around one huge goodness. table in here. So innovative. I cannot, I cannot believe how much versatility you've been able to do in such a relatively compact place. Yeah, so it's still, this is like a full sociable day boat that is made for sun and lounging, but you still have the off deck open for any sort of water sports activity, stand up paddle boarding, whatever you want to do. And you still have the multifunctionality of the four deck area and you have the occasional overnighting even and the head. Gosh, and the and you've maintained with this versatility at every level, you've maintained a great flow. Yeah. You can still walk between the engines, no problem. You can even have some gear back yes. there if you want. And, you can and walk you between have, here. And you uh, do the same thing again with the roof. So yeah, I'm having handholds all the way around the boat. Right. And I will have the continuation of the handholds also all the way here. So wherever you're on the boat, you will always have something to hold on to. Mm. Boats are never stationary, they're always moving around. So in that sense, this was one of the key focus areas we also wanted to do. And I also noticed that even at the helm here, you, you can access the helm. This was one of the key benefits or one of the key requests that uh, our customers had that for the driver on the 28, there was no access from the driver's side. Sure. So what we actually did is that we widened the side consoles a bit more than mm -hmm. on the 28. Okay. And we actually made a small asymmetric seating the same way as we have on the cross cabin. Yep. I'm gonna adjust my microphone here a bit. Got a bit excited. Sure. So uh, 
we have a bit of an asymmetric seat base, so mm -hmm. you have more space on this side, but we saved enough space for you to be able to easily, to easily slide in and out yep. of the boat on the driver's side. So yep. these are the, the amount of improvements that we're doing thanks to customer feedback, thanks mm -hmm. to your feedback as dealers, just saying how they, how you want us to improve our products to make and meet the demands of tomorrow's customers, even in a more competitive world that we are moving more into. But, but just, you know, as I said, competition keeps us sharp. They keep us focused on improving boats and with the right finished perseverance, the sizzle, we, we just keep plowing. Well, and again, you, it's a safe boat to run. It's a comfortable boat to run. It's, it's just amazing what you guys continue to do. Yeah, and we're actually playing around. You already see the badges that we have around the boat. Yes. So we have a badge that is called the Adventure Collection. Let's have a look at some highlights that we can do for the Adventure Collection. One thing is actually that the Adventure Collection will be comprising of a full clothing line. So okay. we have a lot of Oxoparians asking mm -hmm. for clothing line. Mm -hmm. This we'll do together with sail racing. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to do a lot of water sports gear mm -hmm. going forward with Joby. And the one thing that I'm especially proud of showing is the inflatable kayak that I've we have that. been working together with Joby to manufacture and get out as Oxopar branded product. And that's actually going to be a line of products that you will be able to buy together with the boat or mm -hmm. sold through our dealerships. But mm -hmm. let's have a walk over and have a look at that one as well. Yeah, so tell, talk a little bit more in depth about the overall idea for the adventure line. Is that just so you can have a, create a turnkey? Obviously, the boat is a key component of yes. the adventure. Yes. But to me, I want to have more of a seamless experience mm -hmm. between the water sports gear, the clothing and the boat itself. Yep. And actually going forward, there are a lot of details that will come on board on the boat mm -hmm. that are actually components coming off a stand up paddle board, mm -hmm. coming off a piece of clothing sure. to integrate and seamlessly these three together. But let's have a look at the kayak. These are all prototypes that we are now showcasing. One is going to be a stand-up paddleboard yep. heading for adventure, Oxopar branded. This is still uh, the adventure badge, as I showed you. The adventure collection is still going to be here, but this is a prototype just to showcase you more or less the size and mm -hmm. the color scheme. But mm -hmm. the materials are going to be revised according to the boat itself. And the the you mentioned size. Do you? This boat is designed to fit appropriately on the hard top yes, that the yes. has. And, That's and very with, cool. And with the roof racks. And actually now, if you see, we have strapped one of the kayaks on yep. top of the 37 cross cabin. Yeah. Wow. And that's now in its full inflatable form. There's going to be, there is a very cool grab bag where you can fold everything in and store yep. on board of the boat. Mm. But let's have a look at the, the kayak that we have here on the ground. So talking about having a fully inflatable kayak for two persons fitting inside this bag. That wow. is something. So for you uh, to get in and out of adventure, this is the way to go in our perspective. So mm. having this as an inflatable kayak can actually, it doesn't take up that much space. No. And in that sense, it gives you the freedom and ability to go out kayaking two persons or one. So this one is made uh, with uh, the cushions inspired from the seating of the, of the Octopart 29. Yep. And it's made with a Velcro, so you actually just simply remove it and to replace it for single person And use. two people can sit in this? Yes, two people. It's made for two people and wow. two people can use it. Nice. Uh, our own, uh, you know, uh, branding on, on all the details. This is something truly fun in one way and just, you know, takes you adventuring and getting you into places which you probably would not go on the first time with a boat, but yep. now you probably go scouting with a kayak first. And then sure. maybe next time you come in, you will be the one guy, the one boulder guy that goes the, a bit deeper inside of that bay or just check because you've been out checking that area with a kayak in advance. You know, I do a lot of offloads, nose into the, into the beach, offload the yep. family. And this looks like a really safe and easy way to get ashore without the risk of getting wet. Yeah, either. that's also one great way of doing yeah. it. And for some uh, in the Mediterranean, for example, when you have moorings that are outside, yeah. just get into the kayak and, and get to shore. It's lightweight, so it's not you know anything uh, hard for you to, to be using. Wow, look how light so, that is. So, uh, you know, 
put that up on the shore and that's it. Yeah, so, you can, uh, with one hand, you could probably just put this from the water onto the hard top yes, of the 29. Yes, so in a way, very easily. Now, it looks like most some of this adventure gear is inflatable. Is there yes. gonna be within this adventure collection a way to electrically pump up this gear? Yes, for sure, of course. Cool. So a 12, 12, volt, uh, 12 volt pump, Great. 12 volt socket on side of the boat. Amazing. So you just pump it in, let it, let it inflate. So uh, of course there's a manual pump following always, but uh, electrical sure. as well. Well, so to me, this is a cool way of adding a bit deeper of your adventuring. And I think, well, I think we spend enough time on this walkthrough. <laughs> so I think this is what we can be showing you today. Uh, there's going to be a lot more following, but I hope you enjoyed the entire walkthrough of the stand. And I hope you got a few insights of the 29 and the 22 and 25 and Oxobar in general that you have not heard from us before. So. Uh, Thanks, Ben. Yeah, uh, pleasure. It's been my pleasure. And yeah. Any last words, anything comes to your mind? Keep up the innovation. That's all I can say. This has been so much fun to be a part of this adventure company. Oh, hey, thanks, Ben. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. And there's going to be more things coming out from both Düsseldorf in the future as well. So just stay tuned to our social channels. A lot of cool things happening in our 10-year anniversary, which will be celebrated throughout the entire year. See you at a boat show.